Hello and welcome to Wild West Garage. My name's Morgan. This is the 1950 Chevy Cab. And I've got all the pieces for this bottom corner here finished. Um, more or less fitted up. So there's uh, five pieces in total here. And uh, in this video I'm going to cover pretty much of everything I did to make every panel here except for this outer skin that I covered in a previous video. So we got a lot to cover here, so let's go. So here's the blank for this repair section here. Um, I think this is uh, 16 gauge material. Actually I'm positive it is. A little heavier than uh, this, this this material here on the truck is quite a bit heavier than what's on the panel like the exterior panels so anyways uh, <clears throat> there's a there's a step in this there's a kind of a pocket here for the hinge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece of metal and I've nicely rounded the corner off I'll just place it underneath here and then I'll take this this guy you know so now this will be upside down like this I'll clamp, I'll clamp this on and I'll take it to the anvil and I'll just strike this along here push that down <clears throat> and then I'll just keep moving this around I'll move it I'll move it like this and I'll flip it over to get this side if I was going to make a bunch of these, I would actually make a piece of metal this exact size. And then I might make even make a, a piece to go around and just kind of squash it down in a press or something. But I'm only making, well, i got to make one for the other side, but I'm only making two. So <clears throat> this will work. going to try a different tool. <clears throat> this is going to mark it up a bit, but this will be on the back side. out ugly at first and I'm gonna have to make it better. You can see how that's working. And I'm gonna flip it over. <coughs> Move it over to the other side. Probably should have left this longer here because this is this is all going to come together because I'm moving material to a different plane. 
That's gonna, it's gonna shrink this. <clears throat> Sort of guessing on that. off that bottom part. of this sort of work on the work on it from the front a little bit here because I've got to uh, I've got to move this line over There we go, I've got it all <clears throat> recessed. Now I'm just going to straighten this out. Might even be uh, offset enough. Pretty flat now. This still help it a little bit. Check it against my template. I've got lots of material. It's, it's, it's actually bigger than the template still. Let's try it on the car. There we go. So I have to turn that down a bit. <clears throat> Make it fit in there. I decided rather than uh, trimming the part that I would just roll the edge over and to create kind of a softer edge 
rather than welding it on the corner. I just find that the, uh, the outside of the A pillar is quite a soft radius on the bend, so I'm just trying to duplicate that here. I just thought rather than trimming that off, I would just roll the edge over. Now I have to weld a strip on here. I'm just wondering if it actually fits in there now. Yeah. Might have to grind it on this side a little bit to make it fit in there. Maybe roll the edge a bit more. It looks like I need to roll this a little bit more right here. So there you have it. Here's the finished patch for the A-pillar. That should do it. Just getting started on some patterns for the the uh, filler panel here, I guess, I don't know what you call it, I call it the filler, between the uh, outer skin and the kick panel. So there's uh, three sides to this part, so I'm just working up the, uh, the main, I guess you want to call it the web, and then I'll make the patterns for the uh, sides. There's the first paper pattern all fitting nicely. I just went ahead and marked because it's got this bead here, just kind of the center of that bead, just to be sure I get it in the right place. And I'm going to trim a little bit off in here. It's a little tight. Here's my pattern. I don't know how necessary it was to tape it together, but I should say my patterns. I just wanted to see how, you know, how it would uh, go together. And I think it's gonna work just fine. I added this piece here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this out of metal. I'll just tack it on the end, just to, just to get this alignment, just to get all these angles right. And you can see how, how that lines up kind of with that. You know, it's, this isn't a, these aren't square angles here, see? So uh, you know, I, think, I think the patterns are, are good. And I got my, uh, my lines in here for the bead. So there's beads on this kick panel, and then there's little beads on this, uh, um, filler piece here that go over those beads and then there, I've got notches drawn in this first piece that I made and so all these lines are lining up 
on my pattern, so that's that's good. Uh, so I'll go ahead and take this apart now and cut this, uh, the 18 gauge uh, blanks out and get it tacked together. And I'm just gonna I'm just probably just gonna tack it together, and then I'm gonna clean this out of here. Uh, I'm gonna try not to mangle it too much, but it's gonna get mangled. It's pretty weak. And then if, once I got this all tacked together, then I'll try fitting it in there and see how it fits. That way, you know, if I have to make any modifications, I can just cut the tacks and move it around. But I think that's gonna be, uh, I think that's gonna work just fine. I'm gonna show you how I made this little bead here. Using the using the sheet metal brake. So I'll start by make forming this this bend here. This probably wouldn't work on a longer piece. But for this, it works just fine. Let's go. So, probably go to about 45. And then just put it back in here the other way around. And just use this clamp to squish it down. There you go. That'll work. So I've got all the pieces formed up. So I'm just going to start tacking this together. Probably start with this piece. Just, just tack, start on one end and just keep tacking it along. Get it on there. I'll put this piece on. And tack this little end piece I was talking about before in there. And. Uh, See how it turns out. So now that I've got this all done, I realized I sh probably should have tacked that little end piece in first because it uh, didn't really want to fit. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute here when I'm done. Okay, a few more tacks to do on this thing. And it'll be ready to, to fit. I think it's working out pretty good. So I put this, all the uh, side pieces, I put them outside of this part. You know what I mean? So they're, they're uh, sitting on the edge of this that way because because the template when I made it, it 
was fitting inside the old piece, so I want to make this, you know, get a little bit wider. Put on the old man glasses. You can see what I'm doing. Turn the welder on too. So it ended up being pretty square up here. So I've got a see here. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I'm just gonna somehow force this. So this will fit in there. Get this angle. It's gotta have this angle. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I'll have, probably have to shrink this a little bit. Shrink this. I have to shrink this or expand this. To make it go like that. So I'll have to figure that out. So that's got to go. Got to go in there. See. Anyways, I was hoping that would just go on its own, but I guess I didn't quite get this. Get these curves the right. You know exactly right. So. Okay, well, I gotta work on that. That's all the tacking I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna, uh, I don't know what happened here. There's a bit of a, but I got lots of material here. I can just fold this over and make that up. Well, I managed to get that piece in there. And by, I just did a little bit of shrinking on this part. And that brought it down. Stay there so that the shrinking here brought this down a little bit and then uh, I expanded this side right here and right here so that 
open this up. Don't move that way. So, so there we go. So I got that. And hopefully, hopefully it's actually the right shape. So this 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 piece isn't really super critical. Like uh, it has to it has to you know it has to match this more or less, right? And it can interfere with the way this this panel lies. Like if it's pushing it out too far, if it's pulling it in, like when you go to weld it, if it pulls it in too far, then that, that's that's a problem, right? But I think just if I lay it here, so if I lay it on here and eyeball it, it looks like it's going to be pretty good. It'll end up, you know, it's not, it's not sticking out too far. It might be sticking out now. I think it's got to go back inside there. So it looks like it's sticking out too far, but it's not. Like if you eyeball it, straight back. I think it's good. So I got to get that all ripped out of there now. And another thing that uh, this, 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 panel here it's got a bump here bumps out this way and that's for the spring part or that's not the spring pocket but the, the hinge pocket but um, that that hinge pocket doesn't even touch this it's 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 outside it's it's if, so I didn't I didn't put that bump in mine because it's not it's not necessary and I think the reason it's there that bump is because on the hinges um, right here, there's a provision for, uh, like there should be another bolt that goes through here and I guess they designed it that way originally, but there's no nut on the, uh, on the pocket. So they just omitted this. So I guess they've made that bump so they'd have some clearance for the nut and the bolt going in there, but it's not, they, they, they deleted that. So there's no, uh, can't see it, but there's no uh, there's no nut back in there. So there's nuts here. And I guess they figured that was enough to hang these doors. So I just made it straight down. Simplified things for me. So I'm gonna get that all turned out of there and see how it fits. So I ground down all the tacks and tried it in the cab it fit nicely so i'm just going ahead and welding it up here and i'm expecting some distortion but and it did distort a bit i talk about that coming up So I'm sure that welding has distorted this somewhat. One thing I did notice is that after I was finished welding it, these this this is all closed in here. This the opening, the outside, like this part where my hands. It's all like the these two sides came in. So. Um, sort of indicates to me that well I know that when you weld something it causes shrinkage in the metal so it's, it's shrunk all along this edge so it's trying to it's trying to open this up I think yeah so this is shrinking so it's trying to straighten these bends out so yeah so it's caused some stress in this part so I might end up having to shrink this this edge down now to get it to fit, but anyways, we'll see. We'll get it all ground down and straighten it back out and see how it fits. Okay, so after the welding and the grinding and the reshaping, push these 
sides out a little bit maybe a little bit too much right there um, looks like I might have to uh, shrink this in a spot just to sort of tighten this up here for the floor pan mind you the floor pan is eh, maybe not I think actually I think it's actually fine now that I pull this out to it but uh, down here it's definitely a, a little bit of a gap so I either have to pull this out a little bit more and, or just expand this a little bit and that'll cause that to move out but uh, I think it's fitting just as well or maybe even a little better than it was before I welded it so it's all good so I'm just getting ready to cut this bottom part of the A pillar out so I can put this piece in so I've gone ahead and welded some bracing in here you can see just uh, just quarter inch solid round rod and I got a chunk of 18 gauge that I broke into a chunk of angle iron kind of thing so hopefully that'll keep it from from the floor pan because all it's going to be once I cut that out all it's going to be holding the floor pan and the sill here is the uh, kick panel and it's pretty flimsy rusty so uh, just wanted to make sure this isn't going to move around and then I got a rod going across to the steering column support there the steering column supports all kind of broken out of this out of the dash there the tabs are busted off so I just welded it to the dash skin and, and what was left of the bracing so it should, should all stay together shouldn't move around so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out now so once I started cutting this bottom chunk of the A pillar off um, you notice I stuck uh, a zip disc in there because the uh, the hinge pocket kind of moved around on me a bit and I was just trying to maintain that uh, gap there with that that uh, old zip disc and I welded in some bracing to just to hold that hinge pocket in the right shape well that was a lot of work so I ended up uh, just reinforcing this because when I cut this across here this moved moved back so stuck that chunk in there braced it across here it's pretty solid now doesn't move around too much and then uh, this thing here that where the hinge bolts on that there was no threads left in this bolt here and this was pretty I'm gonna do a little bit more work on this I just kind of ran some weld over it just to build it up a bit and it's pretty pitted I suppose I could have just cut that off there but you know, six and one half dozen the other I guess um, so I'll fix that up a bit better I promise and then uh, there's this extension here on the sill that I cut out so it's up here so now I gotta make a piece to replace this so you know that's that'll be the next thing so this whole corner here what's it gonna be uh, I guess there's one two three four now five that'll be the fifth piece I've got to make so uh, five five pieces make up this bottom corner here so anyways uh, it's getting late Sunday night I'm going to go and play some Scrabble. So I'm just working on this piece here. This is the uh, extension under this, like this, of the sill underneath the A pillar. Um, I'm kind of cheaping out here. I've got this piece that kind of barely fits the bill here. It's just an off cut. It's going to be a little short here, but I'll, I'll work with it. Um, so I'm just trying to get established where this bend has to go here, so, um, got so much ink on here, it's kind of hard to tell what, what, what I'm doing. So anyways, I'll, uh, switch into hyperdrive and get her done. Show you what it looks like when it's finished.
pretty basic part. I'll, uh, I'll bring you back when I'm part way through it. I don't know if you can see this here. So this, there's a plane here. That's not blood, by the way. Uh, it's paint. There's a uh, this plane here. It's kind of flat up to this point, and then it steps up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put a I'm going to split this new piece. I'm going to split it, and then I'll form these shapes separately, and then I'll you know put this. It's kind of a ski jump kind of thing here. And this will be longer, and then I'm just going to fill in a little piece right here like that shape. I'll just weld it in. I don't want to mess around trying to make that. I mean, it's, there's no point. Well, that should do it. That took way longer than what it looks like on the high speed. Uh, had to add some chunks on the bottom here. Short right there in the end and short on this corner here. But anyways, that should be not exactly the same, but it's really close. See how it fits on the truck. There we go. Oh, yeah, so it's gonna go right there like that. That'll be fine. More than fine. All right. Time to go in the house. Cleaned up, all that bracing cut out, all those weld zones there smoothed out. Um, yeah, that's looking good. So now I've got to cut out the uh, kick panel. It's going to be, uh, it's going to force me to make some bead dies for my bead roller. Which is good. It's about time. Just trying the skin on again. Check my measurement from here to the back. All good. Dinner time. So I just so I just finished cutting out the kick panel. Drilled out all the rivets. Rivets? And just cut it below this opening for the heater. One up a little higher in front of it, till about, till about here. And so I got a piece laid out on the bench and I just flattened it all out, unfolded everything. Of course, there's these. These beads here, I didn't uh, want to flatten those out. Those are pretty critical because those have to line up with the, the beads on the door. So uh, i got to get those in exactly the right place. I'll probably make this a little higher here. Well, I will. I'll make it a lot bigger because that bead will really affect this edge. So i got to make at least you know an inch, inch wider here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out now. So what I'm doing now is I want to locate these beads and they've got to be, i got to be pretty careful where they go and how they line up and everything because they, they, like I said, these line up with the ribs on the door. 
So, um, you know, nobody's going to be able to eyeball it, but I want to get it reasonably close. So I'm just going to, there's a convenient rust hole in the middle of this one. So I'm just going to make a mark there. And that looks, yeah, that's pretty much centered on that. So what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to run one, this one bead here, and then I'm going to uh, measure over from there to get the next one, and then I'll run that, and then I'll get, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll measure over. I don't want to, I don't want to map them all out and then have, uh, have you know, because it's going to pull the metal around, right? Every time you do one of these, somewhat. So I just want to do them one at a time. So I can finally say this thing is a bead roller. I just made this top die and I took my step die and had a big enough shoulder on it and I put the groove in that so you know, I've, you know doubled up on this one die. So I just tried it on a scrap piece and it looks pretty much to be what I need here. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because this is so rusty, but I think it'll be fine. You know, it's funny, these beads on the door are totally different than on the kick panel. I mean, they line up and everything, but on the kick panel, it's, or on the door rather, it's really sharp. It's really sharp on the top, and then it's just kind of very kind of feathered in down here. You know, like it's, it's not as sharp a corner on the bottom as it is on the top. And I can show you that. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but you know, see that? Let me focus. See how it's it's just it's like a comes out at a 45 degree angle almost on the bottom kind of so anyways it's kind of kind of funny but anyways that's the way it is <clears throat> part of me wanted to make the dies so I could make this profile that's on the door but trying to do a restoration on this truck so I want to kind of keep it the way it was so I'm going to try this out. There's my first bead. So it wasn't just a matter of uh, rolling that bead in there. And I couldn't do it all in one pass either. I went back and forth on it about I think four times. And then there was a lot of distortion out here on the ends, and uh, uh, so what I ended up doing was shrinking, putting just putting the edge, just this area here, into the shrinker, shrinking it. If you can see some of the marks there still. Yeah. So, and then I just sand it over it with a piece of 80 grit, just to make it look nice, but um, that's going to do it, for sure. Just got uh, two more to go on this piece, and then I can uh, form this curve. This has got to curve out or in, I guess, or what, however you, yeah, if you're standing on this side, it's going to curve in. So this this flange here will go back into this plane here. It'll go parallel to this plane. So. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and put these other two beads in and call it a night. So, bead number two. Now this goes 
pretty much where this go is going. Going the right way. to keep it on track because you don't have a hard edge to line up on. Well, it's starting there, so flip it in the other direction. Crank in a little more power. It takes more power to use the deeper you go on this thing. Good. More power. Oops. A lot easier to keep it going in a straight line once you get a bit of the bead established. It's kind of tracks along nicely by itself. Good. Maybe I'll do one more pass. Yeah, it's pinching da down on the flat now, so as far as it's going to go. I will run the other one, get it cleaned up, and give you a look at it. Here we go. Kick panel. Not perfect, but not bad. Had to do a little work on the ends to kind of finish them off. Um, and this end up here, this top one should be back about there. I went way too far with it. I drew a line on here to get these in line. But I didn't realize that this one is back here somewhere and it was actually way out here where the fold was going to be, where it folds around the front of the firewall. So I just knocked it down enough to get it away from that fold and I think I can get away with that. Unless, the, unless some real purists come 
comes along and says, hey, that's too long. That top bead's too long. Two points deducted. I think I'll get away with it. I'm just going to film all this. So I've got to straighten it out a little bit. And then put this deeper out here, further away from the bench. Clamp it in and try again. Might be good. Just kind of guessing. That's kind of what we got to do. I think it's going to be perfect this time. And you missed the part. So I guess I shut the camera off. I'm going to set it down there. So what I said while I was doing this was that maybe I maybe did maybe, maybe I said that already in the next clip. I'm going to say it again. My sister-in-law just subscribed to my channel. She's 70 years old. So, you should do, and you should tell your sister-in-law to subscribe. She'll love it. Come on. Woo. Oh, that didn't fall out of there. Okay, what's this looking now? Get this out of here. Let's push this up to 90 flat. That's, that's better. That's looking good. Okay, are you ready for this? Something's not right. The uh, beads don't line up. I guess the curve's a little too tight, that's all. I just have to open it up a little bit. Something, I'm not sure. It's my second attempt, so now it's raised it up too high. Anyways, I'll play around with it. I'll make it work, I promise. So I think that's going to work. And it doesn't really matter if this um, kick panel is touching here. Of course, it would be better if it did, but. That does, it doesn't matter because nobody's going to see this and it's still, you know, it's still structural. Uh, once this is all spot welded along here and spot welded all along here, it'll be fine. I, I don't think that was touching originally, actually, now that I think about it. Let's take a look on this side. I don't know if I can see that piece in there. Yeah, there's a gap, see? There's a gap right here. So this piece wasn't touching the inner, the inner panel either, so. So, we're good, we're factory. Awesome. Right, look at this from the inside side. There we go. Beauté. Just getting this panel fitted up here. It's uh, fitting fairly well now. Had to do a little bit of work down in here. I'll show you on the outside. So 
So this had to transition into uh, this had to transition into uh, to running down this flange here. So I had to make a a cut here to remove some material. Then I'll weld that back together. So now I just have to uh, make this fold here so it folds around onto the firewall. And I think it'll be good. Be ready for uh, the other stuff to go on top of it. I'm just going to mock this all up and screw it on. For now, Zico it on. Get it all fitted. And then uh, kind of thinking I'm not going to weld any of this on until I clean the rust up because I want to get inside here and paint it and everything so if I put too many pieces on there I won't be able to do that so anyways that's where we're at right now and it's looking good a little more fitting here so this piece here the spiller piece I'm gonna have to uh, cut out um, it's not it's not going up high enough so I'm going to have to cut out a little piece up in here because this corner is going into the corner of the uh, floorboard or the kick panel and uh, it's, it's keeping it from moving up. You see, see down here too, there's a, big, there's a big gap here. So this, I might have to trim a little bit off the inside corner here too get this 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 bottom bit here to go up but uh, it's, you know, it's fitting pretty good <clears throat> <clears throat> looks good nice nice to see some clean metal on this thing there we go everything's put together with Clecos Everything's fitting fairly nicely. There's a bit of a gap here, but uh, I think that's because the uh, this panel here is a bit bowed. So it's bowing away from this. So once I take this off again, I can I could straighten that out a little bit and it would lay, lay it up tight against here. And then there's a little bit of work maybe to do down here, depending on how the fender fits this. I'm gonna I'm going to wait till I do any work, more work on this. I might need to shrink this piece or expand this piece to make that tighten that gap up. But I don't want to do that until um, I have a fender. Still got to drill the hole for the uh, heater hose. Uh, this is fitting beautifully along the the, uh, the pillar here. Just this it just just perfectly matches that. It's in a little bit here, along here, so what I'll do when it comes time to weld it, I'll just weld it on the face here first, and then weld around the corner, and then I'll push this down against the, the pillar and it should be fine. Um, this is not completely done yet here. I haven't quite decided how I want to deal with this top edge. Uh, I, might, I might roll that uh, high spot there up into the... Uh, heater opening and then just weld weld down here and across and then same on the side save it'll save me a bit of welding so I think I might do that but uh, it fits really nicely um, I think it looks great so anyways uh, that's it for this corner so I'll be off to the to the other side now Thanks for sticking around. It was a bit of a long video, but there was a lot covered. I really enjoyed everything about this. I hope uh, I explained everything uh, well enough that you can understand how, how, I, how I made these parts. And, uh, you know, I have lots of other videos uh, that aren't really getting many views. And all the metal shaping I do in those videos are just as interesting as, as this was. Um, I've learned a lot. Uh, over the last year since I kind of re-ignited my metal shaping career. I, uh, I've been doing this uh, 
for almost a year now full time and uh, it's really been fulfilling for me. I really enjoyed making these videos as well, sharing what I'm doing here and I hope that uh, I'm inspiring other people to do the same as far as metal shaping and even starting your own YouTube channel. So uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to consider that and at least I'd encourage you to. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. And in a minute there's going to be a, a circle. It's going to pop up on the screen here. If you click on that, it'll prompt you to subscribe. So check that out. And then there's going to be another box up here. It's going to have a video link to uh, the video that I made this, where I made this piece here. And I think it's pretty interesting. So uh, check it out and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.